the first thing that you do when you're going to draw figures for practice, like, is the goal is to get them to look humanish, right? Not to get them to be a specific person. Um, so what I do first is draw is divide my paper in half, and then what I do is draw figures just down the line, right? So basically, I like to use halves for the proportions. So half of the human body is the tip of the pubic bone right there, which you can see in the skeleton, right? So boom, boom, half. So then uh, half of the half is at the knee and right at where the nipples would be if the skeleton had flesh, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know. So what I do is I go ahead and I make a top line and then I divide that into quarters, right? So this way when I draw across the page, I can adhere to the proportion. So the first four lines that you do when you start out a figure drawing, they're really important. So we can't really do it as well on the skeleton because it doesn't have, it's not bearing weight. But the way it works is um, you draw a head, right? Then you go down the, the line of the spine to where the pubic bone is. And then we'll say that the skeleton's left leg bears the weight. Then you draw the line down the weight-bearing leg and then bind the foot. So one, two, three, four, right? So that, um, those four lines like immediately set up the gesture of it, the movement, the proportions, everything. So from there you develop, you, just going by the process. So this is like the initial gesture process. Then you can kind of um, concentrate on the three major masses, right? You have the head, then you have the rib cage and the pelvis. Okay, and there are certain surface landmarks that project out to the surface of a person um, on each of these, right? You have the tips of the clavicles, right? See them? And they, they poke out on the outer shoulder and on inside you have the tips of the pelvis and what you can do with the pelvis, connecting those two little points in the iliac crest, you can kind of box those out. So you can catch, you can catch the tilt of the pelvis and make the pelvis into kind of a, a box, more or less, in linear perspective, which is kind of cool. And then for the limbs, you know, it's a matter of attaching those onto the, onto the existing skeleton, right? And then, once you have the rib cage kind of established, you can establish like kind of the front. And what, and the skeleton's a little out of proportion, right? Like, because these scientific skeletons, they have extra length in, the, in between the bones. And then they actually, for these, they'll synthesize the bones from different bodies, right? So you might get the rib cage from a dude and the pelvis from a woman, the skull from someone else entirely. So they're going to be out of proportion when you practice. But anyway, if someone wants to stand up for up there for a second, I'll kind of show you like how to do it with an actual an actual person standing there with weight. So go where I can see your feet, like right there. Yeah. So stand on one leg or the other, not split weight. Right. Yeah. Okay. So everybody kind of adheres to the same sort of. Um, this is my friend. I like the same height. Yeah, right? It's the exact same height as the skeleton. <laughs> but everybody basically has like the same canon of proportions. So here what you try to do is find like the center line and then you can see that she's on her right foot. So you kind of draw the weight bearing right foot and then you find where the that foot is and you start to like find the ground. So one, two, three, four, you've established kind of the essence of the pose and then the other leg and then what you try to do is, to check yourself, you go from the crown of the head and draw a ramrod straight line all the way down, and it should hit somewhere on the weight bearing foot, right? On a static pose. If it's like a dynamic thing, like something crazy, you know, that that's a little different, right? So that's a check. Then you put in the rib cage, kind of know where it is, put in the pelvis, and you know, 
clothes actually provide you a great opportunity for wrapping lines around the figure. See what I mean? So you can use lines off the clothing to help you create forms. And then you can use like creases in the elbow, things like that. Because basically a human is kind of like a bunch of organic cylinders, right? And then you can use shorts and stuff too to create more increasing amount of overlap and whatnot. So the idea is that you get um, sort of the idea of a, of a human first and then get specifics later, right? So you don't even have to finish it, but you can, you know, you can add in, start the cylinder of the neck based on that, right? And then you can add in hair if you want hair being just a helmet with strands, and then volume of the head. Wow. Done. Okay, so that's an acceptable, like, quick gesture study, right? So on that, you can, if you don't get too heavy with your line work, like, I'm going heavier than I normally would, but you're done. So somebody else switch out so she can, so she can watch. Okay. Mm -hmm. I could you stand that way just a little. Okay, cool. So stand on one foot rather than split weight. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So. It's all right. It's got pants on. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Well, you can kind of tell. So. Yeah. So you go center line <laughs> down to half, then down. He's kind of more on the right than the left. So you go down. Boom. There you go. Establish that foot, and then boom. Get the other leg in. Right, then he, you know, start to. So his his uh, shoulders are kind of up a little higher, right? Mm -hmm. And you always look for anything that isn't level, is asymmetrical, curved off of, uh, and just generally off of the uh, the sort of normal ninety degree angles that we would expect, right? And then you have nice like creases in the jeans you can use. Kind of get wrinkles, boom. Looks like a gangster. <laughs> right? <laughs> he's kind of he's kind of in the gangster pose right now. Hand okay. in his pocket, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then you can kind of like indicate where eyes would be, right? And indicate where a mouth would be. And it doesn't, you can do them kind of in a cartoony style. With just dots, you don't want to get too like obsessed with detail because it's, you're on such a small sort of surface area. But you have the essence of the pose down. Okay, the next thing to do is, um, uh, it's tough because we don't have a direct light, but the next part of the process is you find the shadow core, right? The division between light and dark which I'll kind of outline it a little darker than I normally would here. And at this point you kind of want more of a specific like bound contour to the forms, right? See a little bit of it there, a little edge there, stuff coming through. And you kind of just work through the figure doing a whole pass of what is light and what is dark. Okay. Next what you do uh, is uh, now you posterize, right? So you take whatever is dark and you just cover that in tone. And it doesn't have to be great, right? You're staying loose and trusting to, that the process will kind of cover up any sort of mistakes, right? So essentially, so how many values does it take to create, well no, not 10, how many to create 3D? It only takes three, right? All you need is a, a dark, a middle, and a light, right? Mm -hmm. So here you can kind of figure out some areas where light gets picked up or doesn't. Mm -hmm. 
and then his arms are kind of in shadow here. And then I can, so now I've posterized it, right? Most of his face is in darkness. Right? Little light on the top of the head and on the side. Okay. Boom. Cool. So that would be your next level. To go beyond that, you would have to add in like dark darks, right? Start adding like the, you know, shadows of the feet, anchor in some of the darks like on the legs and in the creases of jeans and, and in the shirt, whatnot. you would find total absences of light, right? And just by adding about three or four places where there's a total absence of light, you've now kind of increased the depth and dimension. So the stage after this, you would want to start getting more specific. Perhaps you would find like, you know, eyebrows, start to add in an indication of a nose, right? Mouth, that kind of thing. Um, maybe add in hairline, potentially. Um, find the actual location and shape of the crown of the skull, that kind of thing. Put in, indicate ears somehow, right? Which small forms are tough on this scale, um, but it's okay not to, not to be like too sort of tight with it. So you want to indicate just the forms, you can develop it later if you wish. Right. So now what I go through, I go through and I kind of like bind the forms a little bit, find like the specific sort of outlines of places, you know. Um, yeah. With hands you're eliminating a lot of detail. You want the solid mass of the hand, but you don't want to necessarily get obsessed with all the fingers, right? So I want to be sure that the genes overlap correctly. And then, you know, feet, all you have to do is kind of make sure that you're drawing in forms and, you know, it's pretty, pretty simple. Right? So you have essentially a posterized figure there. So now you could take this home and probably from memory, like, work it up and you have a quick, like, five, six minute sketch. So that takes you through about like half of the overall process that we wrote down last time, like up to posterizing and a little bit of like binding, right? So, I mean, there are a lot of tricks to it, like you can relax now. So um, there's component shapes, like you have box forms, right? You know, you can box out the head, you have cylinders, right? modified cylinders, so like for say an arm or a leg or something like that, you could have modified cylinders slash triangular sort of things, right? So for say a shin, right? You would have this sort of triangle mixed with cylinders and then your ankles and feet would come off of that. See what I'm saying? Then there's also this idea that when someone stands on one leg in kind of a in kind of a one pose or the other, that the line of the shoulders and the line of the pelvis are opposed, and that when those forms intersect, they kind of pinch, right? They create this like little tense area. Like someone do a super exaggerated single leg pose, like that. So you see, My hip pops out. yeah, the, the hip pops out. <laughs> the, you know, you see the tilt of the, of the, um, the rib cage versus the tilt of the pelvis. They kind of go opposed. So you always look for that. And then you try to get this pinch. And then ways you can express the pinch is by this idea of a bean shape. So you have the rib cage overlapping. So you create these overlapping forms. You can create uh, the bean shape in any way. You can have like twist, um, things like that, um, you know. So basically you take any of these ideas, you can take, you can take a, a box and sort of make it a little organic, round it out, 
but still have the boxing. Um, and essentially you're just kind of layering these up and then eventually getting towards this light. So, you know, you could easily think, okay, I could put a cartoon head in here, right? You know, <coughs> posterizing things, create light, pretty simple. Or you could um, divide the cylinder in half and you could make a knight's armor or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, it's all about stacking component shapes. And so that's why I start with linear perspective with, with everybody, because if you can do linear perspective, you can do these, these forms, right? And so when you, then what's cool about it is you take sort of the boxy pelvis form, and then let's say you want to add in a leg onto it. You sort of box out a leg, right? And make it attach to another form. And so this is how cartoonists will, will construct cartoons, but you can also take it in the realistic direction, should you want. Something you want to know about. Yeah. So that's like, that's as simple as, as I can make it just for now, for like a final day of drawing class. But, um, but these are really powerful tools. So boxes, beans, cylinders, uh, triangular forms, uh, spheres, you know, um, cones, less so for figure drawing, but you might, you know, use cutoff cones. Like an ear is kind of like a wider cone, right? He does look like a gangster. <laughs> yeah, well that's kind of the pose that he had, right? Yep. So whenever you do this, you're, you're essentially trying to establish motion, weight, light, the sort of general pose of the figure and attitude even, 